Hello, this is Aaron Wall, and this is a free SEO video on on-the-page search engine optimization strategies. One of the things a lot of people forget when they um, do on-page SEO stuff is that they want to try to key into keyword density and stuff like that, and they forget about doing stuff that, that the appeals to the users to get people to do what you want them to. So I thought um, one of the first things to remember when you're doing on-the-page stuff is you want to make it easy for people to do the goals you want them to. Uh, Stephen Krug made a, a book called Don't Make Me Think, which is kind of based on the principle that the easier you make it for people to do what you want them to and the less they have to think, the, the more people are going to do it. Higher conversion rate means you can pay more for traffic and spend more on marketing, get your brand out there more, get seen more. So doing all that allows you to, to you know, rank better by the sense that you have more mind share. And the way that's going to show up in the rankings. So in regards with that, um, I thought I'd show a couple sites that did on-the-page SEO kind of well in, in that they allowed uh, the content to be broken up into small, non-imposing chunks so it was easy to see using lots of subheaders and stuff. So I haven't played with this site in a long time, but this is my old site before I created SEO book. And you notice how there's only a sentence or two and there's, there's headers and all that, and then this bolted list is all broken up. That makes it really easy to scan and for people to find exactly what they want to do. You could take that one step further, like Dan Thies did on, on his site, SEO Research Lab, and you call out the specific groups of people you're interested in, and then put your relevant offers for each of them on there. It, it doesn't look as pretty as some sites do, but it converts far better than most. So having said all that, um, one of the first steps for on-page SEO is to see where you're already at. So you have to have some sort of analytics in place to know where you're at, to see what pages are important, what pages um, could use some work, and, and that sort of stuff. You don't want to just, you know, if you're not tracking, you, you really don't know what's going on. Um, so here's a website that uh, recently the person asked me to ask them how they could optimize their site better. So if you go to their home page, you can see, just a second highlight. So right here, this page targets crop insurance. Notice every time it has crop insurance, they're right next to each other. It's two words, and it's in the page title as well, in the, in the header. Ideally, if the page was optimized, um, you'd mix things up a bit. You'd make sure the headings were, were different than, say, the page title and that sort of stuff. The page title could be a lot more compelling. I, I have a video on page titles and meta description tags as well on YouTube. And also here, you want to have links in the content. How's it? It's it's not easy for me to do anything if you offer no call to action here. So you need to to fix that as well. And then when they call out the different services here, you really want it to to make sense who it's for, growers, agents. That makes sense. And each of the pages really needs to be targeted on a specific term or a specific set of keywords. Now, when you're doing the, the pages, it's important that the, the, the headings contain some of your keywords and the page titles do, and that you mix it up, the order of it. Sometimes it's in, uh, crop insurance, sometimes it's insurance for farmers, sometimes it's farmer insurance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The, the more you can kind of mix modifiers in there in a natural, good-sounding way, the better it's going to be. So you can use keywords tools like... like um, like keyword or like word tracker to, to look at some of the keywords and then you can also look for related words like here's farm insurance you'd want to stay away from state farm stuff but maybe farm bureau and then some stuff on here like tractor insurance maybe some of those complementary services make sense from a marketing standpoint to offer all those maybe you can offer ones that the competitors aren't inclusive in your main thing and you can use Quintura to kind of come up with ideas for keywords related to your core keyword. And, and this is nice because you can mix some of these modifiers into your page content and, and rank well for it. Google also provides a keyword tool which will try to, they'll tell you what they think your page is about based on the keywords on it. And that's useful because if it's not targeted into what you want them to, then then maybe your, your on-site optimization isn't as good as it should be. And they offer also offer keyword tools based on, um, you know, whatever keyword you enter. Um, beyond that, there's, there's a lot of opportunities in, in, inside the, uh, the crop insurance market and in just about any market. What you really want to do is you want to look at some of the you know, legitimate, a 
authoritative sites in the market and look at what they, they use on their content because they're kind of defining the local language. And if you match up with what they're doing, then you're going to probably do pretty good. And so right here is like, I used SEO for Firefox. I have a video on that as well. And um, it puts all this data next to the results. And you can see a lot of these top ranked sites for crop insurance are from, say, 96. And, you know, some of, the, some of them are kind of old, 98, 96. And they have people linking at them. This new site has no links at all. And no matter how much on-page SEO you do, you're probably not going to rank well for competitive stuff until you do some link building as well. And I'll make videos about that as well. So it's key to use the links in your content to drive action, to mix up how you're using your keywords, to um, use bulleted lists and subheaders to break up your content. And also, if you have editorial por portions of your site, it's a good idea to link back to past coverage of the same topic, such that you're using your internal linking to, to drive um, people to more relevant pages, but also to help search engines understand the relationships between the pages. Um, another big tip too is a lot of times people will create pages that are that are, are short and then paginate and that sort of stuff. From an SEO perspective, having a couple long pages like say a glossary and stuff like that gives you a lot of relevant text on one page that, that helps you rank for a wide array of keywords. So having stuff like a glossary or, or at least a few other um, you know longer pages on your site is good. And if you, you're in doubt on whether to put content on one page or two, you're typically best off putting on one unless you're going to need uh, multiple sets of uh, content with different targets and touch points because you're addressing different audiences with the offers. Um, thanks for listening. This is uh, Aaron Wall. If you have any questions, please ask them at SEO Book, and please subscribe to more of these videos on YouTube. Thanks.